Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. I'm John Wago, the executive director of the U.S. Christian Commission, and we've refounded a group and an organization that was called one of the wonders of the world when the Civil War was over. You see, they had gone to almost every battlefield and every hospital during the war and alleviated much suffering. That's kind of an understatement. You see, they were there at the beginning and they were there at the end. And they went to the battlefield with what they said was the bread in the one hand and bread of life in the other. They took the gospel and distributed through the hands of 5,000 volunteers what we would call a billion dollars worth of goods. 70% was for the body, the medical, the clothing, the foods, the shirts, the socks, 7 million pages of stationery, writing rooms and reading rooms, and 30% then was religious printing materials, but nothing to scoff at. That's one and a half million Bibles, 39 million pages of gospel tracts, 8 million hymn, hymn books and devotional books, 18 million Christian newspapers. And you see, the story of the Christian Commission has been left out of the history. I've spoken to the curator of the Park Service Museum here, one of the collections of the largest in the world of Civil War artifacts, and he told me this. He said, I've heard of it, but we don't know anything about it. Could you tell us? And we're here in Gettysburg today in the first museum in the world to pay honor and tribute to these heroes that went to the battlefields with the gospel. And one of those was a Chamberlain brother. If you've seen the movie Gettysburg or read the book Killer's Angels, you know a lot about the 20th Maine taking that stand at the end of the Union line here on July 2nd at Little Round Top. They could not quit, they couldn't for surrender, and they couldn't give up. If they had lost the end of the Union line that day, it might have been fateful and uh, ended the battle in a different way here. And as they make the approach to Little Round Top, the movie features Joshua Chamberlain, the colonel of the 20th Maine, and his brother Tom, but they forgot one brother. You see, John Chamberlain had met up with the 20th Maine down in Aldi, Virginia, near Leesburg. He was a seminary student and a volunteer with the U.S. Christian Commission. When he arrived on the battlefield with the 20th Maine, he wasn't carrying a rifle or a bayonet. He was carrying Bibles and bandages and the love of Christ. And as the shells came in, Joshua turns to his brothers, both of them, and he says, we better split up, boys, otherwise it could be a hard day for mother. It really would have been a tough day. Joshua then says, John, pass up ahead and find a place to receive the wounded. So he was on the field working with the wounded, ministering to them both body and soul here from the Christian Commission. And after the battle, John heads back to Washington, D.C., where he's captured as a suspect spy. You see, they wore their civilian clothing. They weren't paid. And they were around these battlefields where not many civilians were allowed or were very suspect. And he's put into a prison cell where he gets sick. It's three years later, and John Chamberlain, newly married, living in New York City, dies of consumption, which we would call tuberculosis. So if you'll allow me, the wound that John Chamberlain suffered here at Gettysburg, although not with a bullet, cost him his life. And he wasn't fighting for the blue or for the gray. He was fighting under the banner of the cross that others might live. He brought the gospel, the bread in one hand and the bread of life in the other. And that story is continued through almost every battlefield and every hospital during the war. The Christian Commission is there. Here at Gettysburg, the Surgeon General, William Hammond of the U.S. Army, said that the Christian Commission literally saved thousands of lives by what they brought in and what they did. They opened the first warehouse at this Battle of Gettysburg. They were on the field with troops. They were on the field the first to arrive with help. And they're some of the last to leave out of the Letterman Hospital four months after the battle is over. Heroes, heroes of the faith. Their story has never been told. There's no monument or marker on any battlefield in America to this organization or any individual. Here alone at Gettysburg, there's over 1,400 stone monuments. But if you were to talk to John Chamberlain or some of these other heroes that we talk about at this museum, I'm sure they would tell you this. They would tell you we weren't fighting to see an earthly monument of stone built. Oh, no. We were fighting to see other men's lives written in the Lamb's Book of Life, the eternal monument and the greatest that any of us could have it written on. God bless you from Gettysburg. When you come here, pay us a visit. We're here to tell the rest of the story so you can know there was hope in the midst of a hopeless situation. And when you return home, you too will know, know that no matter what you face and no matter what you walk through, God will never leave you nor forsake you because we can show you stories from the battlefield here that might seem like Armageddon. There's no height, there's no depth, nor width, nor life, nor even death itself that can separate you from the love of Christ. Heroes of the faith here at Gettysburg and throughout the Civil War, they stood for the truth. And it's a part of American history that's got to be told and be remembered that we can all take courage to continue to write those stories today, that the generations of the future will know that Christ lived in us and through us in our times here in 2009 and beyond. God bless you from Gettysburg, and we'll look forward to seeing you soon.